Okay, the purpose of this video is to show you how you can use the XML loader on the Unity Asset Store to somewhat painlessly take an existing project um, and add functionality for, for you know, saving or loading to an external XML file. Um, you know, and some of the reasons you might want to do this is if you, know, you, you want the player to be able to mod minor things in your game, right? So maybe you want the player to be able to slightly adjust the max health of the player or maybe weapon damage or something like that. Um, or maybe you work in a team and whenever you edit, you know, a prefab for something minor, like a player name, you have to completely save the whole prefab and you could have a conflict with somebody else on your team. Um, or maybe your, um, your player needs to save progress. And when you save progress, there's all sorts of minor values that have to be saved to a file somewhere, right? And I'm going to show you how you can use the XML loader to, again, somewhat painlessly do this. So what I've done is I have, I have an example scene. Um, there's really nothing in it, just a player. And I gave him, you know, just a generic player stuff. So this player has a name, he has a level, and he has some skills. And if I open it up, it's just a, you know, a generic mono behavior. And he's got a public string, um, you know, some in an integer and a list of, again, just a class of player skills. Right? And we want to load this from an XML database. So the first thing we need to do um, is add the XML database script to any game object. Now, obviously, I could have added this to the player, but I chose to give it its own game object. Um, there's only one public variable, and that's relative file path. And I'll just name it player.xml, because that sort of makes sense, because it's for the player. Um, and then now we just need the, you know, some way for the player script to access this database. Uh, for the sake of time, what I'll do is just do a public uh, variable that I can drag and drop. Now, of course, you could have done whatever you wanted to do. You could do .git component. You could do a find. You could do some sort of um, some script that's only responsibility is for storing all the instances of databases, you know, whatever you want to do. But again, for the sake of time, I'm going to just do the drag and drop because it's a little faster, right? So I could just drag and drop. And if you're wondering, I append underscore mono behavior after all of my mono behaviors um, just so that when I'm unit testing, I know that I have to do .add component instead of equals new. But if it really bugs you, you know, feel free to rename it to, you know, whatever you want. I don't care. All right. So now we have the player. He has an, in, you know, he has a reference to the database and we have to do something with it. So I'll just do it in start because that sort of makes sense, but you could do it, you know, whenever you want to. And all I have to do is call database.populateObject. The object that I'm populating is this, and I need to give it a record name. Um, I don't know. I'll call it main player. And that's it. Now, if I were to press play, it's going to give me two issues, two warnings. The first warning being that the database couldn't be found, player.xml, because it doesn't exist. And the second warning being that the record can't be found. Now, it's slightly redundant, of course. It gives you a warning about the record when the entire file couldn't be found. But, you know, oh well. Um, okay, so it gives you a warning, and somewhat helpful. It tells you if you save this database, it will automatically be created for you. So we can save it really, really easily simply by calling database.save. And when you save a database, all of the objects that were populated with it will be written to an external XML file. And again, just to make sure uh, I'm not cheating or something, if I were to open up this folder, which is where it's gonna go, it's currently empty. Now when I press play, it should create a file called player.xml. So I press play, open up the folder, and here's our player.xml. And if I were to edit this in something like Notepad++ and drag it over here, what you'll see is that there's just a, a basic XML file, and all it has is one record called main player and nothing else, right? Uh, and if I were to open up the player, you'll see that he has things like player name, player level, and they, they are completely unaffected. And the reason they're unaffected is because two reasons. One, they weren't found in the XML file, and two, we didn't mark them for being loaded to the database. Um, so to mark them, it's fairly simple. We just have to use attributes. Um, and the only attribute you have to use is database entry. And optionally, you can provide a, an entry name for your, for your variables. So let's call this guy player name with a capital P. And for this other guy, let's just not give him a manual name. Now, a reason you might want to give a manual name um, is that if you give a manual name, you can safely rename these variables. If you don't provide a name, then the entry name will be based off the variable name. So in this case, it will be player level with a lowercase p. Now, if I were to rename player level to something 
Maybe I decide, okay, I don't like player level. It needs a better name. Maybe it's called player power level later on, right? Well, now in the database, what I have, what I had was an entry for player level. And I don't have player power level. So all my previous entries for player level are now, you know, are now useless. And I've, I've wasted all that data. And what you'd have to do is manually rename your XML files or do something to rename them to player power level. So if you use, you know, a manual name, you can forgo all that and safely rename your variables. A second reason um, is that if you sometimes variable names aren't very user friendly or they're not as user friendly or as readable as, as they could be. So you can give it a nice readable name, you know, that you want. All right. And I'll let me this back to player level. Okay. Now again, I'm going to press play and nothing should happen when I press play. I press play and again, all the data has been retained. Right. And if I were to open up my file again, you'll see that it's because there are no records. Right. Now, had I saved this when I did, by the way, automatically. So had I saved this, it's going to automatically populate the database with the values. So here it automatically populated it with player name, Bob, the player and player level 18. And again, note the lowercase P. So it is case sensitive. And while I remember this, I'm just going to move how it's saved for now. Now, by the way, you can save it anytime you want. Uh, it would be very weird to save a database right after you've populated it because nothing has changed. Um, so you just, you know, save it somewhere. Let's do a save equals true. And of course you don't have to save every single database too. So maybe in your game, you have something like the mass of the earth and the mass of the earth is never going to change. So in some, you have some file that stores the mass of the earth and you never have to write to that database ever. Right. Unless, of course, you have a game where the player is modifying the mass of the earth, and then you would, I guess. All right. Okay. So I go back here. Hello, public boolean. Make me a little bit happier. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right. Now I press play. And again, it looks pretty boring because it's still Bob the player, and the player level is the same. Now, if I wanted to, I could open up this file, and I could name him instead of Bob the player. I could give him a name like Billy the trader or something why well, that's a great name sure so now he's billy the trader now when i press play his name has changed to billy the trader um that's it now you, i did forget by the way to do the skills right and you'll see that the skills were unaffected again because they weren't in the database so let's let's do the skills now for the skills it's still the exact same thing as do a database entry. If I want to, I can give them a record name and I will just, so I'll call them skill. If uh, I did not, the record name would be all skills. And then down here, I have some other entries or some other values that need entries too. So this is a database entry here and this is a database entry down here. Now enumerators are a little interesting in that I don't have to provide them a name but I can still use a consistent name. So what I can do is add a database entry to the skill type above the definition. Oops. If I could type, it would be a lot easier. And I could just for consistency call skill type. And now anywhere that you ever have a skill type enumerator, you will use the same entry name. So it's, it's kind of nice for consistency. Uh, if I wanted to though, so maybe I had two skill types here. So I have skill, like let's say primary skill type. And this one was called something like secondary skill type. I don't know. Right. Oops. See daisy. Secondary skill type. Go over here. Go over here. I could give this, you know, a completely different name. So I could call it secondary skill type. Of course, it's up to you and based off your particular needs. Whatever. But I'll see the default things for now. All right. So now I'm populating my list of player skills and um, all the relevant attributes in here that I want. Now when I press play, once again, nothing should happen because the attributes weren't found, the records weren't found. All right. And so again, nothing was happened. And that again, of course, is because there's nothing in here. Now, if I were to press save and I open up the XML file, you'll see that now I have a bunch of new data that corresponds to the attacks. Um, and if I were to open up both of these next to each other, you can see that I've got um, 
you know, a, a scale corresponding to this, to this skill here. And then inside skill, I have skill type and skill level that again corresponds to these things here. And again, the skill type name, this text is derived from this enumerator. And um, for enumerators, the value is a string that's derived literally from, you know, enumerator attack dot two string or speed dot two string. <coughs> Uh, this is minorly annoying if you want to rename your enumerators. Okay, I'm just not finished. All right, next something you might want to do is you might want to save um, changes that happen to your script in runtime. So let's say your player's been playing for a while and he's leveled up and now he's level 99 or something like that. And now he's got a new name too because he's just really, he's just a, a Billy badass now. So now he's Billy the Slayer. Now if I press save, here and I reopened this. Now he's Billy the Slayer and his player level is 99. So if I were to press play and I were to rerun it again, it loads his new player level and his new player name. So he's Billy the Slayer and he has a new power level. All right. So there's that. And now just one last thing just to, to go into it. Now we didn't have to give a constant sort of static record name here. So what I could have done is do something like public string record name. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do this in a second. So just record name, and over here I'll have record name. Now I can have two players, if I wanted to, using the exact same script, but still having completely different sets of data. So I come back here, give him a record name eventually. Okay, now I'll call him main player. And now let's say I have another player, and I'll call him what? Secondary player? Sure secondary player and I'll use his record name be called other player and his name can be I don't know Fred the man I'm not good at coming up with names all right and he'll level will be 44 okay all right now when we run it you'll see that it's not using a constant name it's using this variable record name and it's going to be looking for two different records for these players so I press run I run it, it gives me a warning that a record wasn't found for other player, right? And now all of his data has been conserved or preserved and everyone's sort of happy. Now, if I press save, it saved it. And if I were to open up the uh, external XML file, I now have a brand new record for other player and it saved it appropriately. And now I press play, I press play again, and it fills in all the the data appropriately. Of course, it's the exact same data, so that was a bad example. Let me rename him to um, Fred the Woman. And now he's Fred the Woman. All right. So that's pretty much it. Um, it really didn't take too long. I would say it took me maybe 10 minutes to do this. But of course, if I hadn't been talking, it would have been a bit faster. Um, and my intention was to make this somewhat simple for people to use. And I use this for my own projects. Um, so if you have any questions or comments or if you find a bug or if you have a suggestion, um, please feel free to contact me. Um, I'll do my best to get back to you. And again, thanks for watching.